Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes. And in today's video, we will discuss lead code question 983 that says minimum cost for tickets. So here you are given one integer added days. So these days are the days of an year from starting from 1 to 365. And these days represent the day that you have planned to travel in the next upcoming year. Right? Now, in order to travel for this number of days that are given in the input, there is some cost associated with it. So let's say uh, if you take a one day pass, so with this one day pass, you can travel one, uh, let's say if you are traveling from the day number two, so you can only travel from the, uh, for the day only with the one day pass. Okay. And the cost is given in the cost of zero, that is the zeroth index. Now, if you take a seven day pass, then it is sold for cost of $1. So now what is seven day pass? So let's say if you start traveling from uh, day three, if you tra start, start start traveling from day three, so with the seven day pass, what you can do, you can travel from day three up till what? Up till three plus seven, that is day 10. So from day three to day 10, you can travel. Sorry, not uh, three plus seven, up, uh, from, uh, for three plus six. So that means up till from day three to day nine, okay? See, because including three, so total, um, so total that are seven uh, days, right? Day three is the first day and day nine is the seventh day. So that means from any day, you can travel up till seven days with the, with the help of seven day pass. And similarly, from for 30 day pass, you can from any day n, you can travel for n plus 29 days, right? Up till this day as the last day. So guys, I hope you understood that what is the concept of this pass uh, that is pass that is uh, discussed here. Now, uh, you uh, you need to return minimum number of dollars. See, each pass has some dollar associated with that. So you need to make a good choice that let's say if you are given this type of days array. So from let's say from uh, for the day one day here, day one you have to choose any one from one day pass, seven day pass, and thirty day pass. And each time you have to choose wisely so such that the minimum number uh, such that the sum of all the cost is the minimum right so guys now let's take a look at the first example here so uh, here uh, you can see that these are the number of days this is the cost for the three uh, three different plans plan with one day seven day and 30 day and you can see the efficient answer you got here is 11 that is a 11 dollars that is the minimum cost so how you can get this 11 see if you travel for this day one with a one day pass uh, one day pass right so that will cost how much that will cost two dollars then if you travel from four uh four to up till eight with a seven day pass right seven day pass then it will cost uh, more seven dollars and remaining this day 20 you pass again you uh, travel again with a one day pass so uh, additional cost would be two so total two plus seven plus two eleven so this is how you can get 11 uh, that is the minimum cost to travel all the given days here correct now if you take a look at the second example here so if you choose a 30 day pass from a day one up till day 30 so total cost in uh, um, here occurred would be would be what 15 15 dollars as you can see and for this day 31 if you choose one day pass then uh, it will increment your means the total cost will be incremented by two dollars so summing up to 17 and yeah this is how you can get 17 as your answer got it so yeah this is how we are do we choose traveling that is the most efficient at a given point and we try to minimize the total cost of traveling for all the given days so guys let's assume that you have this many days to travels one two three four nine fifteen and thirty five See, the range of these values would be anywhere from 1 to 365. Got it? It can be anything. And the cost study would be something like this. Let's just assume 1, 2, 3. Cost of 1 day pass, 7 day pass and 30 day pass. Now, the thing here is from for each day. For each day, you have three choices, right? Either to choose 1 day pass, 7 day pass or 30 day pass. For each point, let's say for each point, you have three choices. 1, 7, 30. And since whenever you have some choices like this then what you can do you can write a recursive solution see whenever you have any choices like this where you have to choi choose from uh, some of the approaches like either to take one day pass or seven day pass or 30 day pass then it is a sure shot that you can write our code recursive solution now if you think of a recursive tree see let me uh, write the index first 0 1 2 3 4 5 
six. So let me show you how decursion tree will be formed. So initially our index would be zero. Our index would be zero. Now from here you have three choices, right? One day pass, seven day pass, and thirty day pass. So if you take a one day pass uh, from a day one, then uh, then whatever would be means then you will uh, have to start again with a second day. Second means second index. IDX would be one because only one day you can travel. So it would be you will increment index by only one. Now if you choose a seven day pass, so from day one you can travel up till what? Up till here, right? Up till four. See, from a uh, if you are current day is one. And you are choosing seven day travel, so you can travel for more than so for more six days, right? Starting from one, so you can travel up till day seven, right? Correct. So the next uh, next uh, starting day would be what day eight. So here there is no day eight directly. We have day nine. So that index is what that index is index four, as you can see. Now if you choose a thirty day plan. So you can travel all this like from one day one to fifteen, correct? Only so the next index to where we will start traveling is day is index six, because previously all day would be travel. If you choose thirty day plan, simple it is, right? Now from here also you have three choices: either to choose one day plan, seven day plan, thirty day plan. Same for here one, seven, thirty, and here also one, seven, thirty. Correct. So yeah, this is how the complete recursion tree will get formed. Where each for each day for each index we have three choices to choose a plan from. So yeah, this for this is for the recursion recursion part. Okay. Now let's look at the code for this recursion part. Let me bring this. Okay. So this is the code for the recursion part. See. Uh, this is the from this main function we call one solve function, okay. So in the first solve function, see this is the base condition or terminating condition that if we reach at an index which is out of the bound that is not present in the days array, then we will simply return zero, right? Now I initialize three point uh, three variables cost one, cost two, cost three that are based on the three choices choice one, choice two, choice three, and this is to calculate what is the next day we have to start traveling, okay. Uh, so that is after one, that is uh, and after seven and after thirteen. So means if you choose, uh, let's say if you choose seven day plan, so you so the next day would be after seven. Means this type of variable I took. Uh, so see now calculating the cost C one that is for uh, choice number one. So it would be current cost plus starting uh, traveling from the current index plus one index. Okay, this is the next uh, day that uh, from where we have to start traveling. Now. As we have seen here, that if you choose a seven-day plan, then we need to do some calculation to select what will what is the next uh, start day, and from that basis, we have to select the next index, right? We have to we have chosen index four. So for that only, if the uh, the current uh, would be index plus one i, and we have to check until the current plus six, right? Current day is a day of five, and from that day, we can try choose next six days. So yeah, we are in order to get that index, we are we are we are doing this for loop and storing it into after seven, right? And we are uh, after seven will consist the last index that will be covered in the current plan, and so the next index would be uh, the next day from where we have to start traveling. Okay, and similarly for this, after thirty would would cover the last index day that would be covered in the current plan, and the next index would be out of the current plan. So yeah, this this is these are the three different choices that we are taking from each index, and simply in the end we will return the minimum, right? Because we need to find the minimum number uh, of cost. So yeah, this is how the recursion function will work. Okay, clear till here. Now the question here arises is whenever you can write a recursive uh, recursive solution, there can there are chances that there can be overlapping sub problems. See. How overlapping sub problems will get formed? Uh, 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 so let's say let's assume this uh, this edge. So if here you are again taking uh, a one day plan, the index would be what? Index would be two. Then again one day plan, index would be three. And again one day plan from here index would be four. 
see there are also choices right seven day plan 30 day plan from from each seven day 30 day there are choices but let's suppose you choose one day plan from here till here so as you guys can see that here you arrived at index 4 and also look here index 4 value the best optimal value for the index 4 is already calculated right see this is already calculated somewhere here so what you can observe here is there are some of the problems that you will be solving uh, again and again so these are the sub problems right this is the main problem you are divided into sub problems and this is one of the sub problems that you are solving again see this is already solved here here you would have get the optimal answer but you are again solving here if you write a recursive code so in order to avoid this type of sub problems see it will be every value correct this type of sub problems would be many in this complete recursion tree and if you build this complete recursion tree then you will find so many sub problems that are overlapping that means uh, so, some of the values let's say for index 3 you would have calculated somewhere else for index 6 you have calculated here and you will again arrive at a point where you will get index 6 again so these are the sub sub problems and we need to avoid this in order to improve the time complexity as well as the space complexity so yeah guys that in order to avoid these sub problems what we will do whenever we get an answer for any one of the index we will store it we will simply store the answer and we will check if the answer is there then we won't calculate See if the index 4 we have already calculated then we won't move forward and calculate for index 4 right because we know the answer best possible answer so yeah this is where memorization comes into picture and we memorize our answer we memorize our code so side by side i let me show you our memorization code okay so here one side we have recursive code and another side we have memorization code so for the first thing what we are trying to do we are trying to memorize based on the number of days see these are the maximum limit of the number of days that is possible that are 366 days correct so initially before calling the function the recursive function we we may initialize this dp with minus one okay see the base condition here remains the same nothing changed only this condition is uh, additionally taken that will avoid the overlapping problems that means if we have already got an answer for a particular index then we will simply return that okay as this complete part is the same but the uh, one more change is at the end that before um before returning the answer we will store the answer in our adp rm that this is the point where we are storing the answer for the current index we are storing the optimal answer okay so these are the only one or two changes that you have to make in the recursive code otherwise the code will remain the, as it is and talking about the time and space complexity for this dp approach this memorization approach so the time complexity would be big of 365 and space complexity would be also big of 365 because at the end we are only trying to fill this uh, dp error right so yeah this is the time and space complexity for this memorization approach so yeah, that's all for this video if you guys have any doubt then make sure you let me know in the comment section also make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel thank you